Hi, I'm Dr. Steve George, Earth Kind Landscape Specialist with the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I'd like to welcome you to this second in a three-part series featuring the top five small, medium, and large trees. Today's best of the best medium trees are key elements in creating a beautiful and functional treescape for your property. They protect your home and make it look larger and can serve as shining examples of the wonderful environmental health of your landscape. We've got a lot of important ground to cover, so let's get going. So what I'd like to go over with you are the top five medium trees for north central Texas. Medium trees have two uh, very important functions, and when we say medium trees, we're, we're talking about trees that have maturity or 20 to 50 feet in height and the landscape functions they perform uh, very important. They provide shade on the southwestern and western exposure so that protects your home from that hammering uh, west sun and they also provide enframement if you plant them in front of and beside each of the front corners that enframes your home makes your home appear larger. You can also use these to enframe a beautiful view in the backyard. Uh, local recommendations are, are our best. What follows are my recommendations for the alkaline, and that's pH 7.7 to 8.2. I, I classify that as very alkaline uh, clay soils of north central Texas. I was very lucky to get input of two of my brightest, most experienced colleagues. And uh, with that, we have uh, these recommendations are based on a combined total of 104 years of actual on the ground working with and evaluating landscape plants in this region of the state. For other areas of Texas, please contact your county extension agent for their list of recommended landscape plants. Their local knowledge is extremely valuable. I have very rigorous performance expectations for, for any tree I, I put in my top five. Um, uh, once established in a clay or a loam soil and kept protected uh, with three inches of organic mulch year round, uh, these trees should be very attractive and give outstanding landscape performance with only two irrigations per year. Now those are thorough irrigations, but only two per year and no fertilizer and no pesticides. And uh, the trees I'm gonna to recommend to you can, can meet those very high standards. First, we wanna talk about uh, desert willow. Here's a picture of uh, the straight species, not a named cultivar. And you can see that uh, many times uh, the straight species has its uh, open uh, lacy uh, appearance. And the one I want to recommend to you, it's number five on my list, is Bubba Desert Willow. And look at those beautiful blossoms. Absolutely beautiful. Bubba Desert Willow, scientific name Chilopsis linearis Bubba. It is deciduous, meaning it drops its leaves in the fall. Uh, has a height of 25 to 30 feet and a width of 25 to 30 and it needs to be in full sun and uh, being a desert willow that uh, obviously has low water use which is great. Now the cultivar selection Bubba was made by my great friend Paul Cox who was a senior horticulturist. It's a role in which I remember him best at the San Antonio Botanic Garden. Uh, he is an outstanding horticulturist and uh, probably the best botanist with whom I've ever worked. So Bubba has a strong vertical form and it's it's larger than the straight species. It has glossy darker green foliage, large as you saw fragrant orchid-like flowers and it produces significantly fewer seed pods and that is a huge advantage. All right number four on the list is Texas red oak. There you see a beautiful example a multi-trunked tree. It has great fall color. Look at that. Oh my goodness. It will make you look forward to fall. Texas red oak, Quercus buckleyi, the scientific name of a synonym is Quercus texana. It also is deciduous, height of 30 feet, width of 30 feet, full sun, and low water use. I love to see that low water use. 
It has great fall color, as you saw. Performs well even in alkaline clay soils, and, and that's uh, a lot of red oaks will not do that. It does not like wet feet. Once it's established and mulched, uh, uh, probably just one watering a, a year in an, in an average year. Uh, it is reported to produce abundant acorns, and it is susceptible to oak wilt disease. Now, there's some things you can do to help minimize problems with oak wilt. First of all, I would contact your oak wilt forester for your area of the state to ensure that you are not near a localized oak wilt hotspot. And I will, I will provide a, a link for you in the, in the comments section. And I don't ever want to overplant any tree species, no, no matter how good they are. And uh, with, with uh, red oak, I would only plant one or certainly no more than two red oaks in, in a landscape. And if you have two, I would certainly have them widely spaced because you don't want their, their roots to graft. And I would uh, follow the Texas A&M Forest Service recommendations for tree care. And I'll put a link uh, for you in the comments as well. And uh, particularly, I would, I would look at what time of the year to prune and the painting of cut surfaces. All right. Number three is lacy oak. Look at those, that beautiful bluish green foliage. Man, oh man, do I, do I love that. Lacy oak, scientific name Quercus glaucoides, synonym Quercus lacii. It is deciduous, height at 25 feet, width of 20, full sun, very low water use. It's native to the Texas Hill Country. You saw that very attractive bluish green foliage. It's very much in scale with uh, smaller yards. Uh, once it's established, and, and it takes about a year for any tree to establish, but uh, you certainly do not want to water it too frequently, especially you don't want to do that in a, a clay soil. It has been designated a Texas superstar. The, I love to see that. The, uh, the people on the Texas Superstar Committee are among the brightest and most experienced and most unbiased horticulturists in Texas. So uh, any plant I recommend, I love that, that if it's also a Texas Superstar because that adds a great deal of, uh, of validity to, to how good the plant is. All right, number two is Big Tooth Maple. Look at that gorgeous picture in that, in that canyon. I think this picture was taken by uh, Mr. Benny Simpson, the legendary uh, native plant hunter and expert for Texas A&M. He is a hero of mine. He spent uh, much of his adult life searching the native areas of Texas for great native plants. Uh, look at that beautiful canyon. I wish I was there hiking in that, that canyon right now. Big Tooth Maple has great fall color, as you, as you see there. Uh, Big Tooth Maple is also known as Canyon Maple, and you just saw a uh, Y in that picture. Uh, the scientific name Acer Granditatum. It is deciduous, height of 45 feet, so that's, that's a significant tree in the landscape. Uh, width of 30 feet, uh, does well full sun to dapple shade, low to medium water use. It is one of the most attractive Texas trees. It's unlike a lot of maples, it's very well adapted to alkaline soils. These are the maples of Lost Maple State Natural Area, has a moderate growth rate, and the mature trees have glorious orange, red, or yellow fall color. This one will certainly make you look forward to fall as well. Number one on the list uh, is Shantung Maple. Boy, do I love Shantung Maple. That great picture of that uh, newly opened leaf was taken by my beautiful bride, Miss Brenda. You can see that, that very attractive uh, purplish coloration. Uh, the, the new leaves have that purplish uh, coloration for about five days after they first emerge. Very attractive. And here it is in its fall color. Again, that picture was taken by Miss Brenda. And ladies and gentlemen, that is killer good fall color. And that's of the straight species, not, not even a named cultivar. 
Shantung maple, also known as purple blow maple, and you just saw an example of why. Uh, Acer truncatum is the scientific name. It is deciduous, height of 25 feet, width of 20, uh, full sun to dapple shade, and low water use. It, it, it looks like a large leaf Japanese maple, but Shantung is just so much tougher, tougher plant. Dr. John Pear, the uh, the legendary uh, hort researcher for tech, uh, for Kansas State University, introduced this tree to the Southern Great Plains, and then I was lucky enough to introduce it to North Central Texas. It too has been designated a Texas superstar, which makes me very happy. Uh, the fall color of the straight species varies, and that's typical uh, with, with seed-grown plants. Uh, about half of the population, in my experience, is uh, yellow in the fall. 25% uh, are red, and the remaining 25% are the most glorious reddish orange you've ever seen. Uh, looks like a, a sugar maple, but all of them are beautiful. Now, fire dragon Shantung maple is uh, is a name cultivar, and it gets uh, somewhat larger, and has uh, an outstanding, consistent red or reddish orange fall color. You want to wrap the trunk for the first three years to prevent sun scald on Shantung maple. So here, for your convenience, here's uh, my list of the top five medium trees for North Central Texas. Number one, Shantung maple. Number two, big tooth maple. Boy, you're going to get great fall color with both of those. Number three, lacy oak, that beautiful foliage. Number four, Texas red oak, more great fall color. Number five, Bubba desert willow with those beautiful blooms. These truly outstanding medium trees can add so much to your enjoyment of your landscape and they are a great fit with our EarthKind Environmental Landscape Management Program as well. I love these trees, and I feel that they will serve you very, very well. Please join me next Wednesday, March the 23rd, for my video entitled, Top 5 Shade Trees for Two-Story Homes.